Okay, floats. So here's a variety of floats. These are sight floats. As you can see the layout fluid, uh, they're going to be sharpened. I started sharpening one, not the other one. Edge floats, uh, those are from Phil Edwards in the UK. Those are regular ones. That's a skewed float. Uh, I think it's seven degrees for skewed mortises. Uh, these are Lee Nielsen floats. Uh, they have the edge variety and cheek floats. Uh, the edge are good for certain things and the cheeks are really handy for uh, che cheeks inside of the plain mortises. And those are mortise floats, eight inch. Uh, those are from uh, a gentleman in France. Uh, those are Lee Nielsen, I said. And those are the French ones as well. They all come in push and pull flavors. And I try to mark them so I know which ones are which, but the marking comes off here and there. So, I'll show you how to use them now. Uh, side floats. Basically, uh, inside of a mortise, we'll, we'll start with the pull float. You can use it really lightly or push harder and get more material coming out. This is essentially what would happen inside the mortise of a plane. And if you go lightly, you can take very light passes. And here's the pull version. So for an edge float, same thing, push and pull. This is the I think pull version. Uh, corners is what they're primarily used for. Works pretty much like a saw. And as you can see, it cuts very aggressively. It's basically a thick curve saw. So we'll grab the... Uh, other the pull flavor. No, that's push. Same thing holds true on end grain. Grab the other one. are basically the same thing, but a little thicker kerf. Over here. Grab the other. Works better on this grain. So like a saw, oftentimes you start up on the end, or sometimes you start back here depending on how it works. And it cuts the same kind of thing. So next up, we'll just set that aside. Grab my jig and show you how they work inside a plane. So if we have a plane we're working on, let's pretend we're working on this one on the inside of the mouth. So what you'd want to do is, to clean up the side of the bed, you'd go like this. Clean up that side of the bed there, and then you can kind of sweep it back and forth. Leveling out the bed as you go. To clean off this part of the bed, you go like this. And on the breast, you can go like that. Little by little, you just sweep back and forth, flatten it out, getting it all even. Now this works really well in the little corners. That's that side. Now let's say we are working on the mortise, and after you have the initial drilling and chiseling, notice this float is the exact same angle as the bed and breast, about 10 degrees. 
so it fits all the way down to exactly like the wedge would. So you can do the top, flip it over, do the bottom, and notice it goes all the way into the bed, cleaning it up from this side as well. These have a little spring to them, just a little bit, so when the mortise is still kind of tight, you can push, oops, I locked it in, you can push up on the top and get a lot of pressure going right in the middle of the mortise. And to clean out the corners, you can use the edge floats right in the corners. That'll square up the corners, top corner, bottom corner, back corners. This is also handy where the cheek floats come in. So I initially use a cheek float to open up the mortise. Uh, you can get really aggressive with this on the cheeks up inside of here. The top and the bottom. And the other one is the mortise eight inch. You can use that straight down on the bed to get the bed flat and the breast side of the wedge, same thing. Now, the last floats I use, these are really fine floats, are the Iwasaki's. Notice they'll be different looking than the rest of them, but I use them as the finished floats to get a really fine surface. But the same thing, it's basically a side and an edge float. Clean the top, clean the bottom, and then get in the corners to get them square. And the same thing works on the mouth, flip it over, and use that side float to clean up those. Get that side and that side. So this is also the point at which when you have the iron in there, you can add a wear angle. And this plane is circa 1850 and already has a little wear angle on there. So with the Iwasaki float, you just kind of tilt it and say, you know, cut the angle in half between the bed and the breast, so about five more degrees between. And using that, you can open up the mouth. Just a little tiny bit. That's it, that's how you use floats.